By now, we all know that one of the biggest perks to using an Android versus, you know, the fruity competition is the ability to customize so much of the experience. And even though the Pixels, OnePlus, and other smartphones do a fantastic job of giving you a ton of features, Samsung is that one that always takes it above and beyond. I'm sure you know plenty of ways to turn One UI into a more personalized experience. But in this video, I'm going to show you even more ways to take that customization to the next level. So drop a thumbs up and let's jump to the first option. Hex Installer is by far the coolest way that you can change up the look of the OS. It's a super powerful and robust customization engine from the Play Store made specifically for Samsungs. By default, you can customize basic stuff like changing the color of the background, quick settings, notifications, choose a different system font, and a few more things. But where things get real interesting is when you download and import a Hex plugin from the Play Store. Think of it like an icon pack, but for themes. Just like you can customize the app on your home screen with an icon pack, you can customize your entire UI with Hex plugins. Some of my favorites are Hex plugin AOSP, which makes everything look like a Google Pixel software. Don't blur a fun and exciting cartoony kind of theme that's a lot more powerful, letting you change the look of the navigation bar, Samsung widgets, status bar, volume panel, and even some small buttons and switches. And then we have Max Trem, which is probably the most awesome and most unique hex theme I've seen yet. It's based around transformers and is done very well. So as you can tell, Hex Installer can really change up the look of your UI and it doesn't necessarily modify any files on the device or require root. It basically creates a theme within the Galaxy Themes app uh, to let you apply it over your interface. And you'll also need the Shizuku app to activate this if you don't have root. If you do have root, you can skip over all of that. Um, and for those wondering, yes, this will still work on the latest One UI 5 update. You just need to find the hex plugins that have been updated to support One UI 5. Repainter is another app that I like to use, not just to customize my Samsung phones, but also to customize pretty much every smartphone I switch to running Android 12 or higher. If you're not aware, Android 12 came with Material U theming, which changes the color accents throughout your UI based on the color palettes of your home screen's wallpaper. But color choices are limited, so Repainter gives you better control by unlocking even more palettes or just straight up choosing different color themes. Here's the best part though, with Root and the paid version of the app, you can unlock toggles to change the colorfulness and brightness of your color selections. So if that background color within an app is barely visible, you can increase the brightness. Plus there's a whole library of user created themes to try out on your device. The only annoyance, and this only goes for Samsung phones, is that each time you apply a theme, it'll force you to restart the phone due to limitations found within One UI. Now, one of my biggest annoyances when using different Android OEMs is all the bloatware that comes with the phone, most of which you can't get rid of. Samsung is one of those culprits, but they're not as bad as they used to be. Fortunately though, with a computer software called Universal Android Debloater, you can remove any app on your phone. You just need to connect your phone to the software by activating USB debugging in your phone's developer options. Uh, you then you plug in the cable and then hit the refresh button in the software. The app will load up a list of your phone's software packages, select the one that you're looking for to remove, and click uninstall. The program will close and the system app will be completely removed from your phone. On top of that, if you realize you've uninstalled the wrong app or later on decide that you want it back, you can easily restore the app from the software. It's a safe and risk-free way to clean up some of the clutter found in your phone's app drawer but always make sure you know what you're uninstalling because some system apps are required for your OS to run. Now, one of the biggest risks I try to avoid is consistently using the same password for every account I create. It's a big no-no in my book because if I sign up for a website that gets breached and it usually happens more often than you think, then all my information, including my password, can be easily accessible to anyone online. And then these random people could have access to my accounts. So to stop this, I use NordPass, which also happens to be the sponsor of this video. It lets me store all my passwords in one place, and then I can use the autofill feature to automatically log into my accounts on both my phone and desktop. That way, I don't need to memorize any of my passwords or usernames. 
It also works with credit card information or personal details, which saves so much time when signing up for anything. NordPass even has a password health feature to let me know if any of my passwords are weak, older than 90 days, or are used for several accounts. And then if they are, it can generate a more complex password that's harder to hack. But let's say some of your accounts do unfortunately get leaked because of a website data breach. Well, NordPass can identify where and when it happened and what type of data was compromised so that you can take action. If all of this sounds awesome to you, then go to nordpass.com slash man for an exclusive NordPass deal. And also you can find the link at the top of my description. Now let's talk about the good old ways that most Samsung enthusiasts like to use to customize their interface. I'm talking about the GoodLock app from the Galaxy Store. It's basically a library filled with powerful Samsung apps that let you modify the UI and add extra features. There's way too many features to go over, so I'll just show you some of my favorites that you may not even know about. For example, with Camera Assistant, you can change the number of pictures taken when a timer is set, from a single photograph to as many as seven photos on the timer. Perfect for group photos or a photo shoot. You can also use Camera Assistant to increase the shutter speed of the camera app. Perfect for when you're wanting to capture fast action shots. But depending on your shooting conditions, this may decrease photo quality a little. Nice Shot is another excellent tool in the Good Lock Toolkit. It lets me automatically enable Do Not Disturb mode when I start screen recording. And I can also add a delete button to the screenshot toolbar to let me instantly delete any accidental screenshots. Trust me, your photo gallery will look a lot cleaner in the future. Routines Plus from Good Lock has been super helpful as well, allowing me to remap my phone's physical buttons based on GPS locations. Like I have the volume down button mapped to open my gym's app and the volume up key to open my fitness tracker. So when I get to the gym, I can start working out much faster. Pretty cool. I also like to enable some other minor features within the different modules found within GoodLock. Like with QuickStar under clock settings, I can move the time to the right side of the status bar to obtain more room on the left side for notification icons. I use Navstar to make the gesture handle much bigger, making it a little easier to switch between apps. Nice Catch's screen wake up history keeps a running list of apps that wake the screen, which can be beneficial for managing battery drain. Using Multistar, you can reduce the screen size to show more content when inside multi-window. And if you're as annoyed as I am by the blur effect that happens when you're adjusting the split view, you can get rid of that with Multistar as well. And speaking of annoying, whenever you're using your Bluetooth headphones, uh, the videos are out of sync with your headphones. So you can use a Bluetooth metronome in the Sound Assistant app within the Good Lock to calibrate the Bluetooth audio with what's playing on your phone to hopefully eliminate any latency over the Bluetooth connection. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many features and options baked into Samsung's Good Lock app, and every month they're including more and more options. Moving on, the hole punch for the front camera isn't that annoying, but you can do some fun things with it or even camouflage it on the home screen. Apps like Ultrapix develop entire libraries filled with great wallpapers based around the camera cutout. It supports some newer Samsung models like the S20, S21, and S22 series. If you have a Galaxy A device though, you can instead turn to a developer by the name of Wallpaper Valley, which also supports a bunch of options. Or if you have an older Galaxy, like one of the S10s, there's an awesome app called Heidi Hole. So depending on which Galaxy you're rocking, be sure to check out these apps. They all have really fun and clever wallpapers to hide or even emphasize the camera cutout. One of my favorite things about using a Pixel is that the power button lets me launch Google Assistant whenever I long press it. I wish I had this on my S22 Ultra, but instead I'm stuck with Bixby. And I can change the double press to open another app, but Samsung specifically blocked out the Google Assistant from appearing in that list. However, there is a loophole to still remap the side key to open Google Assistant when long pressing it. So first, you need to download the Google Assistant app from the Play Store. Then you'll go into the system settings, select Bixby routines, click add routine. In the if section, tap the plus selection and look for button action. Then select side and press and hold for the interaction. Tap done, go into the then section, tap on apps, select open an app or do an app action 
and look for Open Assistant. Select Done and then Save. And then it'll let you customize the routine appearance. Once you're done with that, you can long press the power key to talk to Google. That's simple. And finally, without having to travel too far, is a ton of customization options right in the settings of the phone. For example, in the notification menu under advanced settings, I like to select show all notification icons in the status bar instead of just the three most recent. Gives you a better idea of how many notifications you have and with that clock set to the right corner, like I showed you how to do that earlier with the Good Luck app, you're fully taking advantage of the status bar. At the bottom of the sounds and vibrations menu is the separate app sound setting, which allows you to select any app to just play audio through any connected device rather than the phone's speaker. For example, I can have Spotify play through my Bluetooth speaker while every other apps and notification sound will continue to play just on the phone speaker. At this point, every smartphone manufacturer offers some hidden or restricted file location for saving sensitive data or private materials. Still, I really like some of the features of Samsung's secure folder. Not only can you hide away your most discreet content on your phone in this folder, but you can also save entire apps. They won't even show up in your phone's app drawer. That's definitely unheard of on most other Androids. In the advanced features menu and then labs, there's a collection of experimental features that I really enjoy using. For instance, I can force all apps to open in pop-up view or split screen view, even if they don't support it like Instagram. And there are new gestures for opening pop-up and split screen view in the lab settings. Also within the advanced features menu is a nifty little trick called dual messenger. As the name implies, it allows you to duplicate certain social media apps like Snapchat, WhatsApp, Facebook, and Facebook Messenger so that you can finally be signed into two accounts simultaneously. To take this a step further, you can even establish a separate contact list for the different accounts for each app. Really handy for those with multiple accounts. Anyways, those are all the extreme ways to customize any Samsung device. I appreciate all of you for watching the whole way through. If you did, I actually made another video covering 30 hidden features in Samsung's One UI interface, which also lets you take your customization even further. That video will be in the cards. If you found this video to be helpful, please make sure to drop a thumbs up as finding these features wasn't easy. Or even better, get subscribed with the notification bell turned on so that you can catch great quality content just like this every week. Also, if you'd like to purchase a Samsung device like the Galaxy S22 series, for example, I'll be sure to tag it on the side of this video thanks to the YouTube product tag feature, sponsored by YouTube themselves. Either way, thanks for sticking to the end and I'll catch you in the next one. Kapow!